this session let's see how we can use the Wiremock recorder to record the mappings now we use this mock service in two cases the first case is if we don't have the service available if we don't have the live service available we can use Wiremock and create the stubs in the way we have created in the previous sessions we can go ahead create our own JSON file add the request response and manually add those files inside the mappings folder and then use them this is the first way now the second option we have is if the live application is available we can use it to record the response and request so we can use it to create our own stubs through the wiremock recorder okay. now why would someone do that if the live application is available why do we need to record it then why do, why do we need to basically mock it there can be multiple reasons we may not be able to use the live application as it could be third party for the extensive testing let's say we are doing some performance testing or load testing and we don't want to put that much amount of load on the third party system that is included in the overall automation testing process then we might just record the responses from the third party live application and then we will use them through Wiremock. So for whatever reasons, we don't want to use the actual service, but we just need to use a mock, a copy of that. Then the best option is to use the Wiremock recorder to record our stubs instead of creating them or writing them on our own. Okay, so in this particular example, we are going to use this restcountries.eu, this particular API. I think we have already used this for uh, many other examples. Uh, in this particular course so we'll simply copy the base uri okay we don't want the endpoint we just need the base uri and put it as a target url now as we are running our var mock on the http port we haven't added https so what i will do is i'll go back and change it to http here so what we are telling var mock is to record any and all communication that's happening to this particular service so simply click record and now we can see wiremock is recording now we'll go to postman and try to hit the service now what we'll do is we'll use let's say this particular endpoint or let's use this one rest v2 alpha co so what we want to do right now we just need to copy the endpoint hey there thanks for watching this video Please do check out our full courses on coding and automation. Links are given in the description. This one and we will hit it by using Wiremock endpoint. We will not hit the actual service directly. We will try to connect to that service through the existing Wiremock service which is running locally on 8080 currently. So when we run this, we get a response 200 OK and this is the body of the response. So in this case, what happens is when we make this request, this actually route through Wiremock that is running locally, it gets the response, creates the stub for the response. And in the postman, we are getting the response, which is actually provided by this particular API. Okay, so this communication is done with the actual service, but this is just for one time now we will stop the recording as soon as we stop we can see it has captured one stub let's go back to the mappings folder and we can see there is one more json created over here okay now we can open it and see what's inside and we can see there is a complex uh, mapping created here we have a request so it is saying if anyone request with a get method to this particular endpoint yes this is the one and in the response we should have a status 200 this should be the body and these are the headers now we can edit any headers we can remove any headers or add any new content as per our requirement to this particular file i'm not going to make any changes right now because it's not needed and we can also see few more stuff added by wiremock we can see id over here name 
and also we can see UUID over here. So when Wiremock records a stub for us, it automatically adds these few more parameters. When we create stubs, it's not necessary. It's not or it's not compulsory for us to do that. But when Wiremock creates a stub for us, it by default add these, but nothing to worry about them. This is how we can record a mapping. Now we can close this recorder, go back to Postman. We have Wiremock up and running. Let's just go ahead and stop it and rerun it because we just added a new stub. Okay. And now we don't have recorder running, but still when we hit this particular endpoint, obviously we know we are going to get the 200 OK and the same response which is provided in the mapping over here. Okay. Just to give you that confidence that this particular response has been given from this file, not the actual service. Let me change something. Let's, for example, let's just make some changes here. I'm just adding this thing here, okay? So I added this hi there, 100 instead of the other country name. And as we have made that change, quickly restart the server. Okay, now when we hit this endpoint again, we can see this name hi there so what it is doing basically instead of now going to the actual live service it is giving us that response from the recorded file recorded json so it's a very good feature it's very handy if you have a live service available for which you are creating a mock just go ahead and use this recorder we can obviously make any changes to the json recorded mapping uh, with whatever we want remove or add or edit any content and which is very handy in the case where the live application is not available the approach is what we have said in the previous two sessions we can go ahead and create our own json file and write our own request and responses and then add it to the mappings folder as simple as that so this was a brief overview of wiremock uh, it's a very good tool according to me for creating mock services in your API automation project. If you want me to create an extensive course on Wiremock, let me know. Also, if you want to deep dive into the other Wiremock features, you can go to this wiremock.org, which is the official site for Wiremock. And in the docs section, you will see a lot of useful information on stubbing, on using Wiremock in a different ways, like we can use it standalone as we are using currently, which is my favorite way of using Wiremock. There is another way also we can add it as a, as a dependency and start and stop the server when we are running the test only. Okay, so various things you can go and check it over here. It's pretty simple, but very useful and very effective. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. This video was part of full step by step course on REST API automation. If you want to enroll in the course, then please check out the links in the description.